Well, today I thought I'd go over uh, some uh, tune-up basics for my AMT uh, Auto Mag 2 22 Magnum uh, pistol that I picked up recently. Um, this uh, AMT Auto Mag is chambered for the uh, 22 Magnum round. This is a, a fairly potent and fast round, which has surprising penetration. The uh, um, Auto Mag is sort of a um, 1911 reminiscent in a few respects here and there. Um, I personally don't think it's a, a super good, good looking pistol, but uh, it's uh, easy to work on and easy to use and pretty potent. So I picked this one up for a uh, just over 300 bucks, so I thought that's a pretty good deal. Let's remove our magazine. It is empty. And uh, what we're gonna do is, is um, we'll, I will disassemble it and talk about some tune-up basics. I'm not a gunsmith, but this is a pretty simple mechanism. And uh, this particular gun has a few issues, which is kind of common with these um, um, firearms that are not super expensive to have some machining issues that we can resolve so that's what we're, what we're gonna do today it'll be uh, um, we'll spend some time on the magazine and some time on the internals I will show you besides being super uh, filthy when I bought this thing and, and not having any lubrication um, I noticed that it has some issues in feeding so when the round comes out of the magazine, um, it's like by brute force that it's forced up into the chamber. So my goal is to smooth that out. I'll try to illustrate to you what I mean. So here we have the um, 22 Magnum round. There's one in the magazine. It's tilted up a little bit pointed towards the, the chamber, which is just what you want. When we, uh, see if we can do this. When we uh, pull it back to let the uh, slide stop go down, then move forward really slowly. We see that it, uh, the round is not all the way up against the top of the breech face. And it does go in but it's just by brute force that it's going in and the edge of the casing whoop, here we go is um, hung up on the uh, on the back of the barrel there it will go in because this, this thing is slamming forward uh, and it just forces it in it seems kind of a kind of a, a rough ride getting into the chamber so we're going to um, uh, smooth that out. Let's remove this. Take our round out of here. And we'll get to it. I'm going to disassemble this to do that. I won't uh, go through the disassembly. It uh, is not difficult. There's a, there's a great video on YouTube where a guy goes into really good detail on how to disassemble it. So... We'll turn this off and get this thing taken apart and show you what we're going to do. So when I cycled this round, uh, of course it, it it does go in. By the time it gets there, though, it's scratched up and kind of beat up here on the around the rim. There's these you know gouges and scratches in it, so it has a pretty rough ride getting into the chamber. And uh, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about all the parts of this mechanism here that it contacts on the way in and we're going to smooth out a few of those things so that when our round gets into the chamber um, it's not all beat up. This gun does cycle and fire. Um, I haven't fired it yet but I saw a video of it being fired uh, before I picked it up and uh, so it does work it's just by the time the round gets in the chamber uh, this thing is pretty well beat up and scratched up so it has a pretty rough ride getting in there so that's what we're gonna do the first uh, burr I noticed was uh, 
right here on the slide right there see a little thing sticking out right there this particular bird doesn't seem to interfere with the uh, movement of parts and cycling however you know um, when I'm cleaning it my my uh, cleaning patches and cloths were hanging up on this so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that that'll be pretty simple um, the other issue was let me turn around this way sorry kind of hard to visualize how this works is the round gets pushed out of the magazine it slides up there's a little curvature here in the bottom of this breech face it slides up here this is kind of rough so we're going to smooth that and then there's a burr which i don't know if i can get this uh flung my camera to visualize it up there's a little burr in the on the right side of the breech face right there right next to the extractor so it's not showing up here very well but we're going to do that and then this lower corner of the um extractor where you're going to um, get a file and uh just right there in that corner there around that corner slightly all the other angles on the extractor need to be uh sharp but that one right there we're going to smooth that because our round it um when the magazine pushes it up into here our round has to has to slide up in here against the breech face and uh um, be under the claw of the extractor there and from the looks of the, the rim of the round after i cycle it it's all scratched up got gouges in it um, it goes in but it's got a pretty rough right in so we're going to smooth that out so the back of the rim of the round it slides up the breech face we're going to polish that it hangs up on a little burr which apparently i haven't been able to help you visualize very well but it's right there if we take the round out i can see a little shiny spot there and this little corner of the extractor can smooth out so you might be able to see the little shiny spot right there that's where that burr is so we're going to remove those the other thing i didn't uh i almost forgot to mention was the slide stop when it comes up it locks in this little notch right here you see this little shiny spot right here on the edge there the metal's pushed up so i'm thinking this gun was so dirty that the slide stop wasn't making it up all the way and a lot of force was being uh, transmitted right to this edge right here. And the reason it's shiny is because since it's pushed up a thousandth or so, when the slide moves on the frame, this thing here is rubbing on the top of the frame rail. So we're going to uh, just level that out too. So the first one we'll go after with this uh, file here, flat file, is this uh, most obvious burr, which was also the one that didn't interfere with function but I want to clean up anyways so we'll be using the file here in this fashion to uh, remove that I'll do that with the camera off because you won't I can't do all this all at the same time and have you be able to see it um, most machinists and uh, gunsmiths will tell you that um, to do this much of this type of work you need to have your piece which in this case is your slide stabilizing a vice and uh, they are exactly right so listen to them however here in this case we have some pretty simple issues to resolve that I will be able to do the reason uh, uh, you know without putting in advice the reason advice is uh, important is because um, at least you'll have one piece be the piece you're working on is not moving while you're working on it it's really difficult to control all the movement and keep all your uh, angles um, exactly how you want them when you're uh, re um, using a file on a piece let's go ahead and do that all right we have removed that burr and smoothed that so you see this little shiny area where i was working on um, my metal 
it's all internal so you won't be able to see it when the gun's assembled the piece of metal that came off is this or the biggest piece is this right here so that's a pretty good sized chunk of metal next we will uh move on to where our side slide stop was banging against the slide there and uh creating a um, some damage on the metal so it's only about a thousand so it's not bad I should be able to just smooth that off that's where that little shiny line is right there and uh, that back in shape the uh, metal of the slide stop is a little bit harder than the slide itself I guess so I was able to, to bend that um, edge of that metal so let's go ahead and do that Okay, we have removed that little uh, uh, bit of metal that was pushed up there on the edge of the where, uh, where the slide stop slot is. Remember that corner needs to be nice and sharp. So, and it is. All we did was take the, the metal that was pushed up down, which only took uh, oh maybe nine or ten strokes of the file because. Uh, it was probably a thousandth or so that it was pushed up, so not very much. So that was pretty easy. Now I'm ready to tackle this little burr right here in the corner of the breech face. And remember, the rim of the round passes right through here between that and the, uh, the claw of the extractor. And it does go in, the gun does cycle, but as it goes in, it's getting roughed up and scratched up. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then after that, we have this little corner on the extractor we're going to work on. For a, um, a lot of guns, it's probably be easier to take the extractor out and do that. But since I have such a small area to work on, I'll do it while it's still in the slide. To remove the extractor in this gun, it appears that uh, you have to drive this pin out right here. And then put that back in and I believe the, to remove the firing pin I have to drive this pin out here remove the rear sight and, um, there should be a retaining thing with a spring there that you remove and the firing pin and slide out so I'm going to spend a, a minute or so this bird in, in here is really small so uh, as before, it's just going to take a few strokes of my file. I have to, have to be very controlled, however, because we just want to remove uh, the burr and nothing else. Then smooth this lower corner of our extractor. Alrighty. Um, just a little bit, finally figured out a way to get a little bit better view of this area where we're working, which is right here. That's where my burr was. It's gone now. And there's a little corner of the extractor, just the corner there. Um, just want to make sure there's no burrs on that. Because as my um, round went in there, it was getting uh, scratched up pretty good as it was just forced through there. But it should have, a, you can see little scratches on the rim of my round. It should have um, a lot of uh, cleaner, clearer path to um, get up uh, and seat it all the way up on the breech face now. Next step, um, we're going to um, do some polishing on this breech face here. I'll probably use some 400 uh, grit paper uh, briefly and then quickly move on to 600. Just want to knock the peaks of the mountains off here. It's a little, little rough right there so that when our uh, follower is trying to push the round up here and squeeze it in between the breech face and the um, extractor that um, that round will be able to just slide up in there without uh, some you know additional friction from this breech face here all right so i've uh, polished that bottom edge of the breech face yeah, I don't really need to polish the, the whole thing, just where that brown slides up there to get onto the breech face itself. So we accomplished that. I plugged that hole with um, some uh, little piece of paper towel to keep any 
quit from falling in there. All right, so we've accomplished that and we'll see uh, how much that helps. We didn't talk about it yet, but um, another easy thing to do is to polish that feed ramp right there. As you can see, it's got some pretty rough machining marks on it. Um, so those are pretty easy to smooth out. So um, we'll do that. You can polish the whole ramp, make a mirror finish, or you know the round just contacts the the central maybe third of it as it's going in. So that's the part we're going to concentrate on. So as the round is going in, it's not having to have such a bumpy ride up into the chamber. There you go. We've got that uh, ramp polished up a little bit. It's not a perfect polish. I don't really need that. How I did that in this case was I wrapped a little piece of uh, sandpaper. This is this particular piece is 500 grit and um, I moved it in this fashion. Of course stabilizing the barrel down here on the work surface. Okay. Um, my strokes were moving in the same direction that the round will pass by there so it's not going over ridges, but following them. Of course, a, a gunsmith would probably use a rotating instrument and he would give a, a mirror finish all the way across, um, which is uh, really good. But for this gun, I, just, I don't really need that. I just need to get rid of uh, those um, machining marks there. So when my round goes in, it's, it's not going all over, over all those big speed bumps, but it has a pretty smooth path. All right, well, on to the magazine. How this works is pretty simple. Um, the slide, well, I'll show you how that works here in just a minute, comes back here and pushes this thing forward. Thing is, as it moves forward, I can feel it's scraping and grinding on this bottom um, corner here of the lip of the, uh, the magazine. And uh, that's why when this round comes out, it's got all the scrape marks are on the on the rim. So um, I think I'll draw a quick picture of how this works here to make sure um, it's easy to understand what I'm talking about. Hopefully, this little picture helps. This would be the the uh, 22 Magnum round here, and uh, it slides, you know, forward. And where it's grinding is where the the lip of this uh, uh, of the the magazine here, where this metal comes up here, this little corner, just it's all rough and it grinds on this round as it's being pushed by. So if we um, take the round out of the picture, this is the part we want to smooth. All right, so. We don't want to touch here, we don't want to touch here, 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 anywhere, just right there. And we're not changing the profile, we're just um, just trying to smooth that off. Because if we were to um, have a way, if we could find a way to um, take a super close up of that, we're not going to see a, a straight smooth piece of metal there in the corner. What you're going to see is, you know, this. So we're going to knock those peaks off there and flatten that a little bit. do that, we'll need to um, take this magazine apart, which is not hard. This little button here, we depress this button, this plate, I think they call it the floor plate, slides off. And, uh, and we find uh, there'll be a spring here, and a follower and a little piece in that sits in the spring, which goes in that hole there, the spring pushes that through. So we won't be using uh, something metallic to do that. Try to get something soft. This might work. Let's give that a quickie try. Let's see how we do that. There we go. So I push that button, move the slide plate forward, or the floor plate rather, and then uh, be sure to hang on to. Put, keep your finger there or this might come flying out. There's the piece that we saw was pushed up through this uh, hole right here. 
like that and then we can uh, take our spring out with that little plug there and our follower fall out the reason we want to do that is we don't want any we want to be able to clean this after uh, we uh, smooth this edge here so we don't have a little metal filings in there that should be pretty easy we'll just be using a, a flat file like this you can hear and feel the roughness of that corner right there that we're showing in our diagram and that's what I'm going to smooth off that will just take a minute so as before when we smooth it it's best to maintain a direction of movement that's the same path that the uh, the round will take so it's following any you know little micro grooves that were left there rather than having to bump over them so um, as I'm doing this, it only takes a few strokes, and I notice that uh, um, the that corner is getting smoother. And we can, yep, this feels pretty good. A couple more strokes. Okay, the other side, same thing. Just the corner, nowhere else. We don't want to change the shape or the dimensions. We just want to get rid of those rough pieces because this is just stamped, stamped metal. And when they stamp it, and then they bend it, and they don't go back and smooth it. So, but we're going to. So that our round slides out uh, freely. So pretty easy to do there. Uh, Starting to feel pretty good. Okay, looks like we're done. So we're ready to reassemble our magazine and uh, test it out. You should be able to um, easily tell that it feels a lot smoother than it did. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It just needs so to be a lot smoother than it was. So our floor plate, you can push this uh, plunger down right here, and then starts to slide forward. And then uh, we just need to get that little button to pop up through the hole again. Now I'm going to put a round in here and slide it forward. Yep. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear a difference from before, but it uh, it's not like dr dragging over huge bumps anymore like it was it comes out of pretty smoothly that's what we're looking for I mentioned I was going to show you how this round is pushed out if you um, and into the chamber by the slide the back of the magazine has that little notch cut out of it and you can see the back of the 22 magnum round there and how this works is on the slide you have this raised area down here and as as this slide moves forward um, that high part there in the middle of the slide goes through the um, notch there and pushes your round forward and up into uh, your chamber. So it'll be able to slide through it a lot easier now that we smooth the, that corner of the, the uh, bottom corner of the lips of this magazine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reassemble this uh, AMT. Uh, I'll record how it's reassembled. Like I said, there's a great video on YouTube already which goes into reassembly in detail. It's not hard. I'll lubricate this a little bit um, as I reassemble it and uh, uh, show you in um, with it already put together next. All right, we've got the uh, AMT uh, 22 Magnum back together. We're going to see if we accomplish our, our goal here by seeing if the, the round um, just goes easily in the chamber instead of having that rough ride like it did before and arriving in the chamber sort of beat up. So we've got our uh, magazine here with our round in it and we should be able to slide forward and have it go right in. It does. 
So it slides uh, right in. There's a slight catch at the edge of the rim as it um, went into the chamber. Um, maybe I'll consider uh, working on that. But other than that, it went right in before it, um, when I would uh, go to put it in. If I were to let go of it, you know, carefully, it would be stuck and it wouldn't move. So it would cycle, but um, now the round uh, has a, a pretty free path to go into the chamber, and that should help me better with the uh, um, you know cycling and reliability. So that was pretty easy. It only took a few minutes. So let's remove this. Uh, Around and uh, uh, review here real quick what we did. So we started with an AMT that did fire and cycle successfully, but uh, by the time the round arrived in the chamber, it was pretty roughed up. It had scratches on it, big gouges around the end of the rim. It just kind of had a pretty rough ride getting into the chamber. So we found some burrs. Uh, one of them was on the bottom slide in this area. We took that one off. That was a big one. We, um, there we go. We polished our, uh, right there, our feed ramp a little bit. Of course, um, you know, that could be polished even more. But uh, for what I need, I just need a nice smooth surface there for my round to go in. Determined that there was a burr. Um, back here uh, and down in the corner of the breech face right underneath the uh, extractor so that came off and then I rounded this little edge right here of the um, the bottom edge only of the extractor so when the round goes by there it's not presented with a you know a uh, um, sharp edger that would you know drag on the round but rather kind of a curved little corner right there so that was pretty easy uh, we uh, found a, that the extractor was because the gun was so dirty before wasn't making it all the way up into this lock position to hold the slide bolt slide open after the last round rather it was down here more and banging on the corner so we took that off and restored that angle that was pretty easy too and then the next thing we did was this uh or the last thing was to um smooth this lower corner of the magazine because that's where the the uh the rim of the round you know rides across as it's going in it was pretty rough because it's just stamped metal, but we just got a little file and smoothed it off. So if I run my, even just my pencil lead along here, I don't feel any roughness anymore. It's just nice and smooth there. So a couple tips there to help you uh, smooth out your AMT if you're having any issues or if you notice any burrs or if you notice uh, um, your round. You know, you always inspect these when I get a, a gun I'm going to use and see how how beat up this thing is after, you know, it takes a trip uh, through the magazine in the chamber and out. This one was pretty rough around here, so it got beat up pretty good. That won't happen anymore. I should make this AMT uh, probably more reliable and finer to shoot. And... Um, actually uh, make it uh, you know possible to use this uh, as a self-defense uh, um, weapon the 22 magnum round um, is pretty potent this is it's not a very large round but this is a high pressure cartridge and this thing is really moving so it has surprisingly good penetration you can see some of the scratches on there that um, were being produced previously when this um, round was being, you know, placed forcibly into the chamber. 
you know, going by all that rough stuff on the way in. So I, I eliminated all or most of that. So that should make uh, this a, a lot uh, funner gun to shoot. I decided to give a postscript of sorts. Um, this particular gun, I wouldn't recommend a dry firing because when uh, the hammer comes up and uh, hits the firing pin, this is not a center fire gun, rather, the firing pin will come out, you know, the firing pin hole. It's going to strike the, uh, and contact the, the barrel here somewhere, right, probably right about there. And you'll find this little dent there. Um, so remember, AMT, don't dry fire it.